<laughs> Darn. Wasn't so easy. <laughs> Ooh, sorry. Back in the shade. I'm on the shady side so I can film. Okay, so I probably dropped out a couple of times because of heat. I kind of expected they happened to land on the sunny side of the tree. Lots of lessons here. Okay, so I, if you saw me deposit them to the box as easily, as gracefully as I could. You now the box right there to the right of the cart is where I put them. But if you remember, that's where I got the box in the first place, right? The bees don't know that. They're just looking for a home. Remember, bees operate on a principle of balance. And when they're in swarm mode, they're out of balance for quite a while. It takes about a month for them to really begin swarm mode all the way to the time they exit. A month, even five weeks, a month and a week. It's not a fast thing. Study Eddie Wood's timeline on the website and you'll learn more. And I'll give more lessons on that later. Okay, so, so, What's happening now, I don't even think you can probably see it, is the bees that are in that family are looking at their whole entire box, side, bottom, front, they're memorizing it. Really, they are memorizing, they're like, okay, this is what our new home looks like. I put the feeder tray in with an empty jar, just as kind of an identifying marker. And then a brick, did the brick trick on the front we will look at that in a minute. But what's happening at the, where the swarm was. That's interesting. <clears throat> because you have lots of scout bees returning. Okay, now, for this. this is directed at the newer members in the program, personal advisor program. When you catch a swarm, you always mentally have to account for Oh, there's lots of scout bees in the field looking for a new home. Yeah, tons of them. Hundreds, if not thousands, tons. And so when you catch a swarm, provided you're just not going to take off and drive away two or three miles. If it's on your property, particularly if it's on your property, you can uh, stay around the swarm site. Now get the box moved out. Catch the bees. Get them settled in the box and then move it out. Don't ever leave it there. The scout bees will come back and dance them right out of the box. Been there, done that. So now the queen is inside the box. Didn't see her. Just know that from reading the body language of the bees and the pooch fanning they do. They roll their little white nozinoff gland out the tip of their abdomen in the back and stick their butts way up in there and fan real hard. And when you see lots of bees doing that, we call it pooch fanning. They're telling their sisters, hey, hey, come home, come home, right here, the queen's here, the new house is here, come back here. So it's like a scent marker. Okay, good. Okay, so now they're deposited in the home, provided the beekeeper didn't screw up and kill the queen. We, we don't want that. But I hear to my right, with my ears, I can even hear a lot of buzzing as the scout bees return to the spot and go, hey, what's up here, man? Now, my question is, uh, is there another queen in this tree, this spot? <clears throat> it could be a virgin queen. I don't know. Don't know. But I will be able to tell that by how antsy the bees are. When the bees are fidgety and antsy, they have no queen. All right? So the queen gives them that sense of safety and security, and they smell the queen mandibular pheromone, the queen pheromone, and they calm down. Boom. They'll calm down. Now, I'm looking at the, at the back of the box here still, and I only see two or three bees. When I started the film, there's like a dozen. That tells me they're all settling down. They're like, oh, okay. Whew, we found a new home. All right, let's get this program underway, and she'll go right to laying. And there's some pretty good frames in there for her to lay up on. She'll lay pretty quick. Probably already getting herself all sorted out. All back to the principle of balance. Everybody's got their job. Everybody settle down, do their job. 
Yeah, do their job. Okay, now I'm gonna let you just kind of look at that. We're gonna move the camera in a minute. But I'm gonna step over to my right and look at the spot and I can still talk to you. I hope anyway. And I'm looking and there's oh, 15, 20 bees just kind of looking for her. <sighs> so what I'm gonna do, now you have to realize a queen pheromone is super, super powerful. And these bees can smell that real easy. So I use my Lysol to kill the pheromone on the tree. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> it's all right. You could probably hear them buzzing in the mic. <laughs> yeah, they're determined. They're like, we know she's around here. Where did they come from? I have no idea. Maybe from one of my boxes. Can't tell which one. Okay, so these bees will do this on this swarm spot in the tree for several days. They'll thin down. It won't be as many. They may even ball up into a ball about, oh, golf ball size to baseball size. And they'll go back home to their old house. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so. Mm. <laughs> All right. So let me bring you around here. The darn sun heats up the camera, shuts it off. So let me, uh, whoops. I'm gonna take you back out. Okay, hang tough. We won't be very, very long. The heat will shut it down again. Show you what I'm looking for. Okay, so I see bees coming and going in the hole. I see bees around. They're still, they're still settling in. They're, they're figuring out what their house looks like. Identifying markers. It's a uh, little orientation flights on the home. They're floating around and then they leave. They're headed right to the field. See, they don't, they don't wait. They get right to the program. <clears throat> so, so you read the outside, like a three foot circumference around the hive. Yeah. Body language in the air. They're home. I'm not worried. <clears throat> not worried. Good, that, that worked out pretty good. It was high, it was like seven foot. See, I had to reach, I didn't want to get a ladder. Just scoop them, gently. Now, look, you know, just because I put them here doesn't mean they, they're gonna stay. I've done everything I know, strategically. Good comb, a little sugar water in there, lemongrass oil smell. Nice home, good little size of bees, good for that box. Brick trick on front. They ought to stay. Years of doing this. When we started doing a brick trick, our absconding rates plummeted. A few left. Okay, fine. We give Mother Nature a few. But when we learned brick trick from our coach, way, this is way back 10, 12 years ago, more. Yeah, scientifically can't tell you why. My feeling is it slows them down. They don't come racing out. They, they stop this raciness. Settle them down. Slow down. 
forces them to reorient. They come out of the holes of the brick. They're coming in and out. They're cool. So we'll see, you know. This way I don't have to open up another colony and throw in a frame of brood, disturb another colony and replace another frame. That's more labor intensive. You ought to work, but that's disturbing more bees. Got to find a new frame. Check off the bees. Hope you don't have the queen on it. That kind of stuff. This right here, sweet. Scoop them, brick them. Scoop them, pick them up, move them. Brick trick. Good comb inside. That is that is an important step. I know when you're starting out, you don't have comb. I know that. Protect your comb. Zentari strategy. You can look on the website. We even wrote an ebook: ending wax moth damage forever. Oh, good read. I concur. <laughs> That's a good read. Good stuff. Good strategy. Protect your comb. Protect your comb. Protect your comb. Yeah, they're see they're floating. I see them. They do a couple of floats back and forth in front. They're very they're very front sensitive. What's it look like on the front? So I really wouldn't want to go change anything right now. Just leave the brick there, the jar there, the two pieces of tape there. The bricks on top always go back in the same position. They're they're memorizing their home. Now again, I don't know which box they came from, but they're memorizing their home. So, you know, I will, I will, I wrote the date on the back of the box, May 6th, wrote the date that caught the swarm. And I won't poke around and mess with them for a couple of weeks, but I'll watch the front porch. And if I see pollen coming in, pollen coming in on the front porch means the queen's present, queen's laying. Pollen's protein. Protein is for the eggs and larvae. So, so we associate the pollen with a laying queen. So I'm very uh, pollen sensitive right now for the first week or so. And I just got to stand next to the hive. I won't stand out front like I am right now. I'll stand behind it to the side and watch. Okay, so now look, I guess I got three videos to load. But these bees are all like chill, man. Floating outside and I'll leave them alone. All right, man, if you got questions, want to learn more from us, that's cool. You might check out the personal advisor program. Shameless plug, always, <laughs> always. Yeah, littlecreekbeeranch.com, northeast Oklahoma. You can go to the website, look at the personal advisor program. That's an ongoing coaching program. That would be smart to do. Paid program, $29.95 a month subscription. There's a truckload there. Take the time and study it. Pretty cool. Very cool. Love it. Teaching lots of people sustainable beekeeping. Lots of tips and tricks, man. And if you learn all these little strategies and put them together, now you got something. That's the whole key. All these little pieces to a puzzle. And then you got something. All right, got to go. This little girl here is bugging me. What are you doing? Go go back home and go, go out in the field and work. You don't need to be in my face. Later. <laughs>